IPS was created to solve slow recovery times inherent to STP, in essence replacing STP in ring topologies. Although STP and IPS use a similar mechanism to avoid network loops, IPS provides much more control, resiliency, and flexibility. In early implementations of IPS, depending on the topology, spanning tree protocol was required to be active. This STP requirement diminished the advantage of the speed of EAPS convergence. EAPS has been enhanced to include the concept of an EAPS shared port, which removes the need, depending on the topology, for spanning tree. When designing an EAPS network, follow these best practice guidelines to achieve the desired results. It's time for some hands-on experience configuring EAPS. Here's the configuration sequence. We'll configure the master, then the transit, enable EAPS, and verify. This is the environment and how the key components are defined. Click on the master node to bring up the console window. Let's give the master node switch a name to keep things straight as we go along. Here we'll create an EAPS domain on the master node. Let's call it EAPS1. We'll configure the ports on the master node, both primary and secondary port, for EAPS1. Let's configure the control VLAN on the master node now. We'll create it and call it control underscore EAPS1. We'll give it a tag of 100. Now we're going to add the control VLAN as a tagged port on ports 1 and 2. Let's create the VLAN voice underscore EAPS1 and give it a tag of 2222. We'll configure the voice VLAN and add the ports 1 and 2 tag. Let's create and configure the VLAN video underscore EAPS1 and give it a tag of 3333. Now we're adding ports 1 and 2 tagged of the VLAN video. And that's it. This completes the first part of setting up the master node. Let's verify our configuration so far. Let's verify the master node configuration at this point in the process. We'll use show EAPS detail and show EAPS, EAPS1. Looking at the detail, we can see we've got an EAPS1 domain set up. If we look at EAPS, EAPS1 detail here, we can see, again, that we have an EAPS1 domain set up. Let's check the VLANs globally and then individually. We'll use show VLAN to see that we've got a control VLAN a voice and a video VLAN, and the proper tags. Let's look now individually. Show VLAN control underscore EAPS. We see the tag, and we see ports 1 and 2. If we look at VLAN voice underscore EAPS 1, we see the tag is 2222, two, two, and there's two ports. Although they're not enabled, they are the correct ports. And again, we'll look at VLAN video underscore EAPS 1. It has a tag of 3333 and it has ports 1 and 2 tag. I've got a good start on the master node, so now it's your turn. 
Click on the SBOX3 Transit node to bring up the console window so you can begin configuring that node. Give this transit switch a new name. Create an EAPS domain called EAPS1 and configure this node as a transit switch. When you see the warning about the master node, respond with a yes. Configure the primary and secondary ports for this transit node. Tag the ports of the control VLAN on this transit node. Create a protected VLAN for voice traffic. Call it voice underscore EAPS1 and give it a tag of 2222. Tag the ports of this protected voice VLAN on the transit node. Create a protected VLAN for video traffic. Call it video underscore EAPS1 and give it a tag of 3333. 3, 3, 3. 